Ooh. Who's hiding in the hole there? Stay tuned to find out. Okay guys, uh, welcome back to Eerie Arachnids. Uh, Dave here. We are going to uh, show off a few things, just a couple rehouses that I did. Um, these were long overdue rehouses, not because the spiders got too big for their enclosure, but the enclosures were full of mold. Uh, this is the Selenocosmia Kovaraki, um, which wasn't as bad. Uh, it actually leveled out a little bit and wasn't progressing, but it wasn't really, it wasn't catching any ground with it either. Um, so I decided today was the day. It had to get done, so we did it. Uh, it's in an enclosure that's probably too big for it, but that's okay. Um, if you see, I made a pre-dug burrow, lined it with some cork bark, pieces of other bark there, and put a leaf over there just for some decoration. Uh, this one will... Actually, did it go back even farther? No, yeah, it's still there. Um, we'll, we'll zoom in for you here. You'll be able to see some legs there. Um... I'm sure this one will have a couple different areas. It'll, it'll dig back and it'll come out the back side there. Uh, and maybe even a side entrance. That would be my guess. It will come out and web. Um, doesn't look to be in pre-molt, so I'm not overly concerned about that. You can see the little guy moving around. Yeah, just You can touch and feel and venture, but we're not going to come out because I don't trust you. But yeah, so we're going to give this one a couple days and we're going to try to feed it. And hopefully it, uh, it adapts to its new home. Uh, quite easily. So there's that little guy. Um, I'm going to go underneath the leaf now. So we, I'll show you the other rehouse that I did and then something new I got yesterday. Now we're going to try and feed a few um, arboreal species. We'll see how well we can video that. Okay, so here was the other rehouse that was done and this one needed it in the worst way. This is the Ornithoctonus horiotibialis. The Thailand Gold Fringed, I believe, is the common name for this one. Excellent, awesome species. I uh, don't know if this is a male or a female, but I do believe it's a female. Um, not not positive, so I, um, you know, we're just going to call it undecided. Um, this... Oh. Alrighty, uh, this is the second of the rehouses that I did. Another Asian species. This is the Ornithoctonus oreotibialis. This this spider's enclosure was horrible, um, just riddled with mold. And again, I tried to isopod it so that they could eat that mold. And um, this spider decided to eat the ice pods instead. When I took everything out of it, there was not an ice pod to be found. the The mold was bad. You know, it was the bad smell, mold, dirt terrible horrible smell um, so I'm glad I got it done and it looks like this one's in pre molt too so I'm glad I got it in here now um, instead of instead of waiting because then you know the mold would have got worse spider would have molted I would have wait uh, I'm glad I decided just to do it and so yeah I don't know if you guys be able to see you can see it kind of you know, if we move you guys a little bit over top you can see that those those cool little colorations, those vague colorations there. Yeah, awesome species. I love it. Uh, have a lot of, been having a lot of fun with this one until the mold issue. But uh, we're in pre-mold. The abdomen's rather, rather large and long, so I would imagine this one won't be too long before it molts. And then we'll have a bigger spider, and hopefully we'll be able to tell whether it's a male or a female. Um, generally, the males mature pretty quickly of this species. Uh, I know a friend had one that went underground. She probably saw it about three times. When it came out from underground, it was a mature male. So, yeah, that's that's kind of when you know, you know, you, you kind of, uh-oh, you know, it's out all the time. It must be a male. But this one's kind of 50-50. It would like to sit at its, its burrow entrance. Uh, and I put cork bark in there this time for it. And, again, I'm sure that it'll use that entrance there. And I'm sure that that area right there will end up being a web funnel uh, or the dirt turret, as I call it. Um yeah, a lot of fun, these guys, a lot of fun. Um, she was very, very, I'm going to call her she, she was rather placid getting out, so she's kind of slow, which leads me, you know, that, that's a pretty good indicator that uh, she's in pre-mold. Um, so hopefully, um, and what I used in this mixture, both both enclosures was a mixture of crushed leaf litter, 
uh, you could see the uh, Spanish moss that um, is mixed in there. Um, I crushed some of that up and mixed it in. There is Repta soil and there is uh, the Burpees Cocoa Core and sand. Um, I didn't put vermiculite in. Um, I, I'm, I really wished I would have just a little bit just to hold a little bit of the moisture, but I think we're going to be okay. Um, we, I will definitely, I'm definitely going to order some springtails. Uh, we're going to get a bunch of springtails so that I can keep these uh, Asian species under control with mold. It was just these two that really, really gave me fits. I haven't had too much issues with any of the other ones so far. So that's those guys. We have a new spider that we got yesterday, and I'll explain that when we look at it. Okay, so down here is another uh, Salmopas Armenia, a uh, small juvenile, young juvenile, uh, sex unknown, very, very skinny, probably molted not too long ago. We're going to get a feed into it here in a little bit. Um, this one was at the Heartland Pets at the mall. Uh, it was a, um, he's got four of them, he had four of them still, and he picked these up in Buffalo at the Buffalo Reptile Expo, or the BNRE, um, it's a Buffalo Niagara Reptile Expo. Um, he picked them up in, in springtime at the expo there, and he hasn't sold, uh, I don't know if he got six of them, he sold two, or if he just got the four, but, so I still had, I had eight little LP babies that I needed to move, I needed to get rid of, and, um, I mean, they weren't a big hassle right now because they're still tiny, but in another six months, you know, a year, they're going to be big, and I, I don't want a bunch of big, huge LPs. I have the Diphacellus, the Kluge, the Parabon, and I did keep one of the little slings um, solo, the one that was by itself strewn in the moss that uh, Amy sent it in. Um, three days later, I think I found it, if I remember right, uh, after I found after I took all the other ones out of there. Anyway, um, I said, hey, you know, do you want these? I'll trade them for, you know, one of your Armenias. And I went in and I, I picked this one out of the four. The other one was a little bit bigger, um, which would have been bigger than my little juvenile female. So I, I assumed that that one was probably a male, and I didn't want to get a bigger male than the female that I have. This one's roughly about the same size as mine. So I'm not really sure. I haven't had a good ventral shot. This is a not good kind of enclosure for that. Uh, the way the plastic is, it kind of gets, like, you know, it gets real, looks bubbly. So like when you look through it this way, see how it gets that smeary look. Um, they're good enclosures to put them in, you know, if you don't need to take pictures from the side or whatever, but this one's been rather calm so far. So I'm gonna get a roach and we're gonna throw it in there and we're going to see if this one is willing to eat and not take off on us. And then we're gonna try and feed the Salmopas Victori uh, another Amenia, the Cambridge eye, uh, the hottie hottie, one of the hottie hotties, and an avicularia species. I'm not sure which morph type it is, but let me go get uh, the roach bin and we'll grab something for this one and see what happens. Okay, I had to make sure I had catch cup ready um, because I've told you a million times that the, the Armenia is one of the ones that I trust the least out of any of the spiders that I've kept. Um, I've never had problems with the HMAX that I've ever had other than keeping them alive. Um, the Armenias seem to just want to do whatever they want to do and kind of worries me sometimes that they just want to bolt. Uh, this one's been in this enclosure for a while, so I'm, I'm assuming it's it's kind of uh, comfortable, but you can see there's there's no wood or anything in there, so I'd really like to get this one fed and then try to get something in there or move it to something different. So let's see if it's, if it's ready to eat or it wants to eat. I don't do this often. Oh, yeah, it does. I don't do arboreal feedings like this often, especially with Armenias, because I just don't trust them. Yeah, it's in there, buddy. Where'd it go? Well, the roach is in there, probably hiding, and my microphone is falling. Did you find it? You can see how small the abdomen is, so this one definitely needs to eat. There you go. Oh, you missed it, I think. Yeah, you did. It's over here now. You're not very good at this. That roach should be a really, really good meal for it, if 
it ever gets it. Come on, you should feel that moving over there by now. We don't have those really, really jet black colors yet. It still has that dull carapace color that they get, that grayish, greenish coloration that they get. I'm sure that you're going to find it over here when we're out of, out of camera range, right? Let me, uh... There you go. Took you long enough. I don't think you're ever going to get that. Okay, so there's a beautiful Samopaeus Armenia. There's, I've heard Samopaeus pronounced about three different ways. So this is the way that I say it because that's the way I've been saying it. So, um, and you know, a lot of the things that actually, believe it or not, a lot of the way I pronounce the words is because I learned listening to Rob C. and to John 3800 a long time ago. So a lot of the ways that I say those words are because of the way I heard them from them. Um, I think there are a few that I say differently than they did before, but uh, yeah. So there we go. Uh, Samuel Pastermenia, the Venezuelan Sun Tiger. We're going to try and feed another one here in a bit. That one's a little bit more jumpy, so we'll find out. Okay, so I decided to try and feed the Victory, the Samuel Pais Victory. And it's doesn't seem to be interested whatsoever in the roach that's crawling around there. So I'm just going to leave it be. Um, but I, I just wanted to show you what it's done so far. It's done this, you know, little webbing here and some webbing here. And it's, of course, webbed all up and through that um, living moss that I put in there. And then there's a stretch of, you can see where the spider is. And on the other side of the spider is a stretch of webbing right here. So it's kind of made itself a nice little nook there. And I expect more webbing in there. I, I don't, I, I don't know you know, what Victorias do. Um, I haven't raised one yet, so I don't know how, what their habits are. I don't know if they web more. Oh, did we get it? I think so. Sure acted like it, didn't it? Um, oh, she, yeah, she's definitely doing the old, uh, let's web down some, some stuff here. Let's turn her around and see what we see oh yay oh that's a beautiful little shot right there huh sweet so again I, I I've heard people call this goofy I don't want to say goofy because I don't want to make anybody mad but these weird odd common names you know like uh, the Mexican half and half um, uh, I, I don't know, it's brown and black, right? So why wouldn't we just call it the Mexican brown and black? You know, we call the Andrew Crematis the uh, Brazilian red and white, so why couldn't we just call this the Mexican black and brown or brown and black, whatever. Um, but because of that half and half um, odd name, I decided to name this one Java. I think I told you that because I like coffee. Who doesn't like, well, I can't say it. My wife can't stand coffee, but a lot of people don't like coffee. Chelsea. You know who I'm talking about, right, Chelsea? Yep, that would be you. Um, is it Chelsea or is it Kelsey? I never asked her that. She is one of the moderators at the uh, Tarantula community. Um, her page is the, or her channel is the eighth page. Uh, so go check her out. She's, she's a really nice person. Uh, super, super sweet. She's got a ton of tarantulas. I didn't even know she has. I don't think there's anything she doesn't have. Uh, every time I'm like, well, I think I should get one of these. Or, you know, I was talking about the Leronathus Giannis Spositoy. <clears throat> and someone apparently had one, had some for sale, but now they're all spoken for. Um, she's like, oh, you'll love, you'll love it because mine, I was like, you, what don't you have? You have a Victoria, you have that. She's got everything. So uh, I'd love for her to start showing some pictures off of her stuff. I, I'd really, really love to see some of her. Of her things, I'll just start checking out more of her videos. I don't know when she's done the last one, but I'm gonna have to go binge her videos now and see what she's got going on. Um, but yeah, so here's the Selma Pais Victoria. Got a nice little, beautiful, gorgeous, arboreal, earthy tones like I like. Just lovely. She's living on the ground right now. 
I'm kind of just, I'm sorry, but I have to watch her. So you guys are going to stuck, get stuck watching her too. So um, I'm sure you don't mind too much. Yeah, you, you do it, sister. Okay, well, that's enough of her, right? So we're, we're going to try and feed just a couple more. Uh, we'll see what the Cambridge Eye does. Um, maybe the Hottie Hottie. I don't know if that one will come out and eat. It didn't last time. It waited for the roach to actually crawl down its burrow, and then it consumed it. Um, and the Avicularia, and then the other Armenia. I'll just grab one and see where we're going to go. Okay, so here we have the water dish filling other Samopas Armenia. This one should be the female. Um, pretty pretty positive we have a female with this one. So we're going to throw the little red runner in there. And she's already catching wind of it. Uh, hopefully it'll come this way for her to grab instead of her running around to the other side because that'll just upset me. That it's a lot better. Um, I, I know those snap tight one gallon containers, the mainstays, are really, really nice for you know, keeping your spiders in, but they are not really conducive to videotaping through, or filming through, I shouldn't say videotaping, because we don't really videotape, right? We're just filming. But uh, these enclosures that my brother had got for me, uh, they're four by four by seven. They're just like perfect. And you can keep, you know, you can keep this little one in here till she's probably four inches. Um, then we'd have to put her in something a tad bit bigger. But I'm going to try and stay small and tight with the enclosures for my Salmo Pass, because I want to see what how they act uh, with if they're a little bit more secure in a smaller tighter space then they would be in something a little bit bigger now the mainstays aren't really all that big so I can't really say that you're you know giving them a ton of space and that's where they may end up anyway uh, because they are easy but uh, I prefer to not use those anymore if I didn't have to man I'm having a hard time with the hiccups here where did that roach go so roach Let's have a talk. I'm going to show you the roach manipulator here. See the manipulator? That's where you want to go. And I believe that we just kind of didn't even want it. Yep, she took off. So it, she's not interested. She's not interested in me at all either. Oh, she got it. That's why she's running. She does have it. There you go. Can you stay still now? And we'll get out of focus. So this is Armenia number two. And I mean, I had a lot of the Samopeus, and I got rid of a lot of them. And, that, and mostly because all my Cambridge eyes were males, all my Armenias were males. And um, I sent my two Reduncus that I had to Quentin and Amy, because Quentin just loves Samopeus. And he was looking for some, and I was like, you know, he's going to love them more than I do. So I sent them off to him, and I, we did a trade, and I ended up with the owner of a species Lao. So, um, yeah, I'm more than satisfied with that. You know, I'll probably get some Reduncus in the future when they possibly breed them. Um, and, and I'd like to probably get the Ecclesiasticus and the Emeraldus and what's the, the Langan Bukeri, I think is the other one. <laughs> Now that I have the Victoria, that's kind of like the crown jewel of the Salmopea, so you kind of have to get, you know, the other ones now just because you have that big one. All right, let's try another one of those arboreals up there. Oh, I get a picture. I'll use her as the thumbnail. There you go. Okay, so you can guess who this gorgeous guy is. Are we losing the camera here? We're, we're drifting our camera. Yep, we're going to restart this. Okay, so here is the Salmo Pass Cambridge Eye. Look at, he is looking good. He is looking like dressed to the nines here. Nice and mossy and goldish and gorgeous. So he's probably more than willing to want to eat here so let's see what happens oh yeah he's chasing it you can see him there oh, he's all over the place 
Did you get it? You didn't get it? Where'd it go? Where'd it go, buddy? Where'd it go? I don't know. I can't tell you. Oh, it's over here. Over on this side. Mister, it's way over here. Oh yeah, you're, you're going to crawl all over the place. You're going to crawl right to him, hopefully right there. these little ring lights to lose their battery power. Yeah. There's still a couple transfers to go. You gotta like you gotta hook that stuff up man. Find that food and, and do some some stuff here. We we can't be having this just sit around and do nothing. Apparently that's what's gonna happen now. Because I'm gonna have to at least try and oop. Come on. Yeah, you know it's there, don't you? Get it. <laughs> it's like crawling in and out of everywhere here. But they have another camera jack there at um, Heartland Pets. And I've actually contemplated it a couple times. The last couple times I was there, but I just don't want to pay that much for it. I know Jim will give me a discount anyway, but um, I'm kind of stacked, really. We're kind of full with the two little pokies, and you know, we, we have the we have the Afana, yeah, the Afana, the Avicularia marinade. Two of those are boreal. We have the um, Seriopogapus shiati, shiati, shiati uh, can be arboreal. Did you get it? Um, we have the Seriopogapus species hottie hottie, three of them that will be arboreal. Now we have two Armenius, this guy here, which he'll mature and I'll send them off to make babies. And this time I won't sell them, I'll just do a breeding loan with them so I can actually get some back. Um, And then wholesale some of them, you know. I don't, I don't know how many babies they have, but yeah. So I think we, we've actually got the prey item now, right? We got it. Right in there. Yep. I see it in the jaws there. He's uh, he's got his dinner. I haven't fed these guys for a little while. You know, I could be able to see them down here, but I try to. I don't want to overfeed this guy because he's a male and I don't want him to mature too quickly. I mean, you're going to get him probably to mature in two years anyway, so um, we don't want to go too quick with him. So let's uh, let's try and feed the Avic. We'll try and tongue feed her and we'll try to film from the top and we'll use the overhead light. And then we'll do the Seriopogabus hotty hotty. Um, we'll try and feed that one next. Okay, let's try tongue feeding this this one here. Oh, yeah. Yummy hungry. I never get a good this one. Look at a good shot. This one it is rather red. Um, and I don't see that prominent fuzziness on the, the rear legs that you would attribute with a Metallica, but it's still little, so or Metallica or Morph Type 6. Uh, it's still little, so you know we, we really can't tell. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, I do believe this is the one that was female because the, the other one died. The uh, one that I only had five legs in the beginning, um, Cinco, um, passed away. Uh, it, it, I just, it just never took to its enclosure, and it didn't eat, and then I moved it, and I think I just moved it a little too late, and um, it lived in the enclosure that I put it in for just a few days, and then it passed away. And you kind of get an idea, you know, when you've raised them for a while, you've had them for, you know, a handful of years, you tend to know when one of your spiders is, is not doing as well as it used to, and not as active as it was before, 
Um, and that one definitely was like, like that for sure. Get some water in here for this one. It's been a while since we've sprayed this one down, so we'll get a little bit of moisture in there. We'll cover it up. And uh, thanks for everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, this one wasn't a very good clip right here, the ending, because you didn't really get to see the spider close up. But we did get to see it feed, tongue feed, so that was kind of cool. Uh, a couple of uh, We're going to be feeding our female pulker soon. Um, she's probably ready to, to eat after her molt. Um, the male still hasn't molted yet. I wish she would hurry up. Um, but yeah, that's it. So you guys know what to do with the bell up top and the Patreon. Uh, go check out the eighth page and Kelsey Chelsea, and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Uh, happy keeping.